Welcome grade 7 learners. Welcome to our another discussion. Before we start, our most essential learning competence is this. Can someone read? Yes, Lawrence. Explain how a selection may be influenced by culture, history, environment, and other factors. How about our objective in this class? Who can read? Yes, Marian. To identify the figurative language as a tool in exploring culture and that's our lesson objective. We're in, we're going to identify the figurative language as a tool in exploring culture and history through poetry. At least you have the idea already on what our lesson will be later on. What was our lesson last time? Anyone? Okay, about emergency from Marian or giving instructions. Giving instructions when it comes to an emergency. Okay, that's our last topic. We are now about to discuss another topic. And I'm going to show you a video. And here are the guide questions for you to answer. Number one, what can you say about the song? Number two, do you love your country? What thing do you do or do you compare to your love of country? Let's go back to the slide. What's the title of the song, by the way? Even it's lag. I know you know all about the song. Okay, Panalo. Yeah. Panalo by, who's the singer? Can you tell me who's the singer? The singer is Izimil. Okay, very good. Who can answer number one? What can you say about the song? Yes, Jurisen. All I can say, the song is amazing and connected to our country. Another? What can you say about the song? Let's see from the chat box. Marian said the song is about loving our country. Awesome. That's great. I know that you all know that the song is all about our country. Also from Lance Andre, it's connected from the history of the Philippines. That's great answer. Who can answer number two? Can you chat your answer? Do you love your country? I'm asking all of you. It's a yes. It should be a yes for us. Okay, many are answering yes. We should love our country. So I'm asking you earlier, you're not answering. You should all be proud. You should all answer with a resounding yes. Of course, we all love our country. The next question, what thing do you compare to your love of country? For example, in my case, I compare heart. I compare my heart to my country because I love my country. How about you? What thing do you compare to your love of country? Anyone? Oh, I chose heart as a thing that I compare to my country because I love my country. How about yours? Anyone who can give me? Hey, please tell me your answer, Buta, Mizaki. Mm, I compare my family. Po. Why family? Because country is like my family too. I born in this country, so I should love this country because this is the land where I was born in. So it's like my family. Po. That's correct. You are considering as your family. You're considering your country as your family because you should show your love, right? Like your parents, like your brothers and sisters, or like your other relatives whom you're considering your family. Your country, you should be considered as your family. Very good answer. I really appreciate it. Lawrence, myself, why yourself? Why do you compare yourself to your country? Because Lawrence, that's how I love my country. It is where you came from. We should all love our country, including me, of course, not only you as a country. And number three, who can answer number three? As a learner of CBNHS San Nicolas, how can you show your love to your country? You said earlier, yes, I love my country, but how? 
in what ways are you going to show your love to your country as a learner of this school? Anyone who can answer, you can write it in the chat box, then explain it to the class. It's like what you are doing right now. Who can tell me your ways to love your country as a learner of this school? Anyone. Gado, please tell your answer. Keep clean the nature. Oh, she told us that by keeping the nature clean, you show you are showing your love to the country. How about uh, Rain Zyril? He said, by studying the history of my country. Why do you need to study your history? Very good. You should also study the history of your country so you will be able to know the identity, where we came from. Yes, Jurisen. I'm sharing my love to our country by helping poor peoples and make love to all the person I love. Why do you need to love them? Because I want to love them. Of course, by helping them, it's showing your love already. And that love that you're showing to them is also considered love to our country already. Okay, that's... Great. How about Angeline, Lawrence Angeline, by taking care of our surroundings and by saving wildlife? Why you, why you told me this answer, Lawrence? Why you should take care of surroundings and why you should save wildlife? Yes, Lawrence. Um, because there are some species here in the Philippines that are getting endangered. So maybe we should take care of them by protecting them from uh, hunters so they could be more species like them. Okay, very good. By taking care of them, you are saving already the endangered species. So, so your children, the children of your children will also see these creatures or these animals that are endangered already. Okay, how about Mizaki? I can show my love to my country by supporting and helping our country through learning some politics and history so I can help my country in the future. Okay, very good. You should also know the history so you can help your country as well. Very good answer. I appreciate it. I hope that all of you will show it, okay? Because it's very important to us all to see or to show our love to our country. Okay, MJ Agulan, by support, by following rules. Thank you very much for your answers. Very good. So I can see that you all love our country as well. We are about to discuss this topic which is related to our selection that we will discuss later on. Who can read? Yes, Mizak. Figurative language gives clearness, force, and beauty to add ideas and add effectiveness to one's speech and writing. Figurative language uses figures of speech. A figure of speech is any use of words in a sense different from their literal definition. Let us review the most common figures of speech. What can you say about the figurative language based from what your classmate had said? Yes, I saw a comment okay, to give pretty speech. In, in many of the speeches, most especially of the poet or the one who is writing or speaking the poems or poems, they are using figurative language to give metaphor, okay, like what Misaki had said. Okay. We are going to tackle it more later on. Thank you very much for answering. I know you are familiar with this already. What are the three examples? Yes, Lance Andre. Okay, the three are the basic. So here's the description. Can someone read the description of each figure of speech? Yes, jury said. Direct comparison between two objects of different kinds which are, however, similar in one respect. Introduced by such words as like and as. Implied smile does not say that an object is like the other or act as the other, but compare, compare the two objects as if they are one and the same. Objects and animals are given human, human qualities. And that's for the personification. Can someone read the example of simile metaphor and personification? Yes, Lawrence. Simile. 
Like a tall woman walking across the rice field, the rain came slowly, dressed in crystal and the sun. Metaphor, morning is a new sheet of paper for you to write in. Personification, the waves dance as the sun smell at them. Don't forget in the simile the words like and as. You can already make a direct comparison using like and as. For example, you're in this example, the rain is being compared to what? Anyone. For the simile, the underlined word rain is being compared to what? Yes, Lawrence. Tall woman. Very good. Tall woman. Uh, you, you are going to put like. So you are making a direct comparison. How about in metaphor? What is being compared to the word morning? Anyone? Sheet of paper. New sheet of paper. Very good. New sheet of paper. But the difference between the simile and metaphor, what do you think is the difference between the simile and the metaphor? Anyone? Metaphor has no what? There's no person in that metaphor there's no person how about the word it's being underlined already in the simile yes lance like and aside from the word like like and as oh, very good the words like and as you cannot see already in the metaphor did you understand class can you show me your thumbs up if you understood okay very good you understood how about in metaphor what are you usually doing in the personification? I'm sorry. Uh, what are you usually doing in the personification? Anyone who can answer? I will check the chat box. Okay, similes use the words like or as to compare things. Metaphors directly state a comparison. How about the personification? Each object are given what quality based from the word, based from the root word. What's the root word of the word personification? Person. First one, it means the object is being compared to the person or human qualities. That's the personification. For example, the waves. Do, uh, do the waves really dance, class? Yes or no? No. Yes. Can you see the waves dancing? Who are only dancing? Only human can dance. Very good. Only humans can dance. So... He cannot see the waves dancing, but since we are using it in the figurative language, you are making the movement of the waves as like the human qualities. So you see the waves dance. You understood in your mind already that you see the waves that are moving. So you are comparing it to dance. How about this? As the sun smiles. When you say sun smiles, what do you mean by that? If you see that the sun is smiling, you also notice to yourself that the sun looks bright. Very good. Did you understand, class? Can you show me your thumbs up? Only two are raising their thumbs up. Did you understand our lesson? Okay, getting six. Okay, thank you for understanding the lesson for the simile metaphor and personification. How about this one? Image three. What is the root word of the word image three? Image. Very good. Image. Image is the root word of imagery. So we can tell us more about imagery using this description. Who can read? Lance, please read. It's an element of the poem that uses words to appeal to senses. It uses simile, metaphor, and personification and other figures of speech. Imagery. In literary, works uses sensory experiences such as sight, visual, sound, auditory, touch, tactile, smell, olfactory, or taste. Distatory. To describe the impression of the reading and create vivid picture or mental images that can explain the meaning of a poem or prose. When we say imagery, what are we using? Based from the underlined words, what are we using in imagery? Yes, Lance? Senses. Very good. Our senses. And we have how many senses? How many senses do we have? Six. Six. Okay. And here are the following. The sight, the sight, the sound, the touch, smell, or taste. You're right, Lance, that we have six sensory images. 
in literature. I want to see your cam right now so you can point me where it is. Okay, number one, sense of sight. Yes, I'm seeing Lance, Lawrence, Mizaki. I want to show Isaiah. How about the others? Please participate. First, can you show me where is your first sense? Okay, very good. It is in the sense of sight. Right? Which appeals to the sense of seeing. Very good. How about next? Where is it? Number two. Okay, very good. To the sense of hearing, which is sound. Very good. Number three. Where? Can I see you? Touch, right? Or anyone, you can touch. Appeals to the sense of feeling. When you touch someone, that person feels something, right? So, we're going to use sense of touch. How about number four? Okay, very good for showing it. Sense of taste, right? And number five, sense of smell. Mm. You're using your nose for your smell. Very good. And number six, how can you show that? What are you doing, Mizaki? I'm moving my oh. body po so I can do the movement. The very motion. good. You're moving your body like that, right? That are the senses. That's the reason why I want you to be off cam for you to see. Very good class for actively participating once again. Look, look at this chart that suggests each experience or sensory experience. Example, who can read the, the expressions and the sensory experiences? Yes, Marian? Expressions. Wind blew its hardest. Sensory experience. Touch. Bend its head gracefully. Sight. New fragrance, smell, sun comes up, sight. Thank you for reading. How about this one? Wind blew it its hardest. Can you feel the wind? Yes or no? Can you feel it? Yes. 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 Can you see it? Can you see the wind? No. 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 Can you smell the wind? No. No. no, no, the best sensory experience for this is touch. touch. Good. You're using touch for the sex sensory experience. How about this? Bend its head gracefully. Can you smell when you see something? No. no. Okay, bending the head. Are you using your sense of smell? Yes no. or no? No. Can you use the sense of touch? In bending the head? No. No, right? Because you are just using what? What sense? Sight. Okay, very good. Because you're using your eyes for seeing that person or that thing bending or bending its head. Did you understand my lesson, class? Yes. Okay, very yes. good. Now, how about new fragrance, right? New fragrance, it's easy for you. You're using what kind of smell? Men. Okay, what kind of sense? I'm sorry, you're using it. That's you, you're Man. using the sensory experience of smell. How about sun comes up? Sight. Very good. You're Sight. using the, your eyes to see the sun, right? You cannot smell the sun. You cannot touch. You cannot even touch the sun. So you use your eyes as the sensory experience of sight. Did you understand? Mm, yes. Yes, sir. Very good. Now, can you read the direction first, anyone? Yes, Lawrence. Read the poem below with feeling. Find out the reason why the author is proud to be a Philippine. Can I hear someone reading the title with feelings? Anyone? Yes, Lance. I want to hear the title being spoken with feelings. Can you do it, Lance? Oh, Lance, you can do it, Lance. What's the title? I am proud to be a Filipino. Is that with feelings? Can you do it once again, Lance, with feelings? I am proud to be a Filipino. Very good. Of course, if you're proud, I am proud, right? You're, you should be proud to be a Filipino. Okay, very good. Thank you very much for reading it with feelings. You can read this first stanza. Any volunteer to read with feelings like what Lance and had done? Anyone can? Yes, Misaki. I am a Filipino. I came from islands peopled with sun, where days are green, fires and nights are warm, with moon and stars girdling my lawn. 
loins. This is blood rich as milk. For I was born of sultans, rahas, kings, soldiers, heroes who fought to sing. The poetry of freedom, my house is in my land. Virgin brown, bomb out of loam, volcanic rock and shells, carpeted with rice, corn, coconut, cane, trees that rise as temples to grapple wind. Rains mildly rivers, furrowing the earth. Where I can walk, my shadow is my is a marriage of blood. Very good. Another. I want to see another another learner reading it with feelings. Any volunteer? Yes, Maria. My life: Chinese, Spanish, American, Japanese. While in my bones, sleep quietly as the bride, vanquish desires of conquerors who dreamed of empires. Gold, trade, and spice. Through a pearly breeze, I stand with the ancients from my love and loyalty. Are as a fish to the sea. I am proud of my brownness. My duty and destiny are thirty million brown men. Planting rice, husky coconut, throwing nets far into the Pacific, hacking mountains of iron, coal, chrome, manganese, and timber to live. We are one and the same. A moving, rest, restless caravan. Okay, thank you very much. That's uh, that's a good reading. Another with feelings, Lawrence. Of dark brown skins, building a holy heritage of democracy, piece by piece with our dreams, sweet and death, as a bird builds patiently twig by twig, the warm brown circle of its nest. I am a Filipino. I believe in the goodness and the bounty of God. I believe in the grandeur of charity and peace as a cure of the ills of men. For I am a Christian who looks upon all men as brothers who who ta whose task it is to love. I believe in my country and in the deathlessness of my flag. For its every color in is a history of courage, sacrifice, and death against injustice, tri tri tyranny, oppression, and hate. Great. Okay, in the last stanza, with the feelings once again, you can read. I believe in my people as noble keepers of the faith, that all men are equal, that all men are free. I believe with verdant and sprawling mountains, hills, valleys, plains, lakes, waterfalls, rivers, sunset beaches and a generous sea, a life sovereign and wondrously happily in work and abundant with hope for my people. I am proud to be a Filipino. Once again, I will ask you, are you proud to be a Filipino? Yes, I am. Yes. yes. Very good. To your resounding yes. Why it's a yes, anyone? Based from all our discussion and based from this poem that I read, why should I, why should be you, why should we be proud to be a Filipino? Anyone who can share his or her idea regarding this one? Mizaki. I am proud to be a Filipino because I was born to be a Filipino. And I should accept to be a Filipino because God gave me, gave me a chance to be a Filipino. So I should grab the chance and be, to be proud to be a Filipino. Great answer. That's how we should be proud. That's the reason why we should all be proud. Of course, like me, if you're if you're going to ask me, I'm I'm going to say that I'm always be proud to be a Filipino, right? And there are lots of reasons like what your classmates had said for you to be proud to be a Filipino. And how can you show that you are proud to be a Filipino? Yes, Mizaki? By proving that Filipinos are great people. Okay, why? Why Filipinos are being regarded as brave people? Anyone? We show love, respect, and also generosity. Very good, right? Like what our heroes had done before. They, uh, they showed love to our country by being brave. Even sh they even shed their own blood for our dearest country. And I hope every one of us will be able to be proud of being a Filipino and doing the best we can do 
for us to show that we are all proud to be a Filipino. Also for Marian, loving our country or loving our fellow Filipinos. We should always instill in our, not only in our minds, but also in our hearts that being a Filipino is such a privilege. Being a Filipino is such a great uh, responsibility. And of course, I'm always be proud to my whole life to be a Filipino. Okay, thank you for actively participating once again. And here are the activities that you're going to do to be passed the next time or the next week. Because what week are we going to pass tomorrow, class? If I may ask, what week? week? Very good. Week three. I'm going to give the link or the, the post in the Facebook group. So you're going to answer. Okay, I will just read. For the learning task number one, I want to see it in your answers. Sorry. Learning task number one. After reading the poem, answer the following questions. Write your answer in your paper. Number one. How are islands described in the poem? Number two, what are the Filipinos doing for a living according to the poem? Do you agree? Support your answer. Number three, what is the cure for the ills of man according to the poem? Do you agree? Support your answer. Number four, do you think it is our duty to be proud of being Filipino? Support your answer. And number five, which Filipino trait or values described in the poem still hold true today? Which ones have changed? Explain your answer. That's the learning task number one. For the learning task number two, read the following expressions from the poem, I am proud to be a Filipino and indicate whether it is a simile, metaphor, or personification. You should write your answers on your paper as well. Number one, girdling my loins in, sorry, girdling my loins is blood rich as a milk. Number two, mighty rivers are furrowed or furrowing the earth. Again, number two, mighty rivers are furrowing the earth. Number three, my house is my land. Number four, trees rise as temples. Number five, trees grapple with winds. By the way, if you have words that are unfamiliar, where are you going to search for it? Anyone who can answer. Yes, Mizaki? Dictionary. Okay, you can use it in the dictionary or... In the internet, where can you where can you find the meaning of it? Google. Very good. In the Google, you can see, right? But of course, you should uh, take note of the ref of the reference, so your answers will be right. Okay. Uh, also, in the internet or in the Google, we have the dictionaries, online dictionaries like Merriam Webster and others. Okay, did you understand? Did you understand, class? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. And for last, learning task number three. Copy and complete the following chart by giving the appropriate sensory experience for the images given. The first one is done for you as your guide. Here are the expressions and sensory experience. Number one. Days are green, fires and nights are warm. The sensory experience is you is the sensory experience used is sight or touch. Number two, God rich as milk. Number three, heroes who fought to sing the poetry of freedom. Number four, rains, mighty rivers furrowing the earth. Number five, birds builds patiently twig by twig. And number six, the warm brown circle of its nest. And for the last part, to sum up our discussion, poetry is very personal, right? 
a poem may mean something special to you because you have encountered the feelings it expresses. You have seen the picture based from our discussion, right? And based from the poem that you read, it portrays or agreed with the idea it promotes from what we have discussed in our lesson. It's all about our country. When you read the poem, involve yourself in the whole process and appreciate the new and unique way that it makes you feel. You will see how it reflects culture, history, environment, or other factors. Lastly, appreciate how figurative language. What are the figurative language examples that I gave you last uh, earlier? Anyone who can still remember? What are the three? Yes, Lance. Simile. Simile, metaphor, and personification. Very good. And how about imagery? What are the examples? Yes. Sight, touch, and also smell. Very good. These are the six senses that we should use for the sensory images. And this add beauty and creativity to a literary piece. That's the reason why the poets are using these words, right? Last question. If you add figurative language and imagery to a poem, what can you say about the poem already if you are going to put figurative language and imagery? You can identify the point of the poem easily. Okay, you can find the point very good of a poem. How about Mizaki? I think you can you can figure it out the meaning of the poem specifically. Very good. The meaning, because that's the most important thing in poetry. The meaning of the words being expressed in the poem. Like the poem that we read earlier. Did you learn something from this class for today? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you show me your thumbs up for the others if you understood the lesson? Very good. Thank you very much for actively participating once again and showing me your thumbs up. Hopefully, we can see each other once again in the week five. Oh, we are up already in the week five of our discussion. And next, or in, in the weeks that are coming, oh, what grading are we right now? Class, what grading? Third grading. Oh, third grading, you are, you are already three-fourths. You are already near to the fourth grading. Hopefully, you should encourage your classmates to pass their requirements, please, right? And if you have other problems with your teachers, uh, you can chat us. And if not, if, I can, if, if we cannot chat you, just ask your classmates and chat me up, okay? If you have questions, if you have some difficulties regarding the lessons, I'm always here to help you out. Okay, thank you very much, class. And hope to see you once again. This ends, this ends our discussion. Have a great day, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, sir. Okay, goodbye. You may leave already. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Bye. See you next week.